So, in our previous lecture, we have seen introduction of shell and tube heat exchanger, advantages of shell and tube heat exchanger, why it is used uh, mostly in uh, industries, different components of heat exchanger, uh, how heat transfer takes place between cold fluid and hot fluid in a shell and tube heat exchanger. Then we have seen different types of shells which are suggested by the TEMA in our previous lecture. So, next important component is a tube bundle types. There are number of tubes which are used in shell and tube heat exchanger in a shell for the flow of particular fluid. So, the main purpose of designing tube bundle is to accommodate thermal expansion or to furnish ease of cleaning or to provide the least expensive construction if other features are of no importance. So, there are the different types. The first types as you can see it is a U uh, bare U tube. Bare means uh, there is a no arrangement of uh, extra surface or we can say that the fin surface. Buffeled single pass shell as you can see this is a single pass shell. Shell and tube heat exchanger. Okay. So, here you can see that this is a U tube. One tube have a, this kind of arrangement which is starting from which starts from here and end at here which is attached with the tube sheet. So, here only even number of tubes are there. So, and this is the second figure. In this figure you can see that uh, the same configuration but with the extended surfaces a fin is, extra fin is provided here at the outer surface of the tube. Here you can see that in our previous lecture of uh, enhancement of heat transfer we have uh, studied that the to increase the heat transfer to enhance the heat transfer the tubes are provided extra surfaces at the outer surface to enhance the heat transfer so this is a fiend surface of the tube okay so this is a fin u tube shell and tube heat exchanger so one design variation that allows independent expansion of tubes and shell is a u tube configuration as you can see in this figure therefore thermal expansion is unlimited the u tube is least expensive construction because only one tube sheet is needed here there is only one uh, tube sheet is needed to support the all the tube bundles. The tube side cannot be cleaned by mechanical means because of the U band. Because of the U band, uh, it is uh, difficult to clean in mechanical way. Only an even number of tubes can be attached as we have just discussed. And individual tubes cannot be replaced. You have to replace whole the uh, whole bundle uh, whenever there is a requirement of cleaning. Then next arrangement is uh, like this a two pass. In previous there is only a single pass here you can see that it is a two pass a two pass tube buffeled single pass shell and shell and tube heat exchanger designed for mechanical cleaning of the inside of the tubes here there is no arrangement such a type of U to U type configuration so you can replace single tube whenever required of cleaning so a fixed tube sheet configuration is shown in figure the shell is welded to the tube sheet this is a shell this is welded to this tube sheet so there is no access to the outside of the tube bundle for the cleaning this is a low cost option has only limited thermal expansion and individual tubes are replaceable you can replace individual tube whenever required cleaning of the tube in a mechanical way is easy then the last one uh, several design have been developed that permit the tube sheet to float that is to move with the thermal expansion a classic type of pull through floating head design is shown in, in this figure. So, a heat exchanger with floating head. This is the, uh, this is the uh, kind of arrangement with a floating head to accommodate a differential thermal expansion between the tube and the shell. The bundle can removed with minimum disassembly, minimum disassembly which is important for the heavy fouling units. Okay. The next important component for the shell and tube heat exchanger is the tubes. There are generally circular cross section which is exclusively used in a heat exchangers. Since the desired heat transfer in heat exchanger takes place across the surface of the tube. So, the selection of the tube geometrical variables is important for the performance point of view. So, what are the important geometric variable which includes the outside diameter of the tube, thickness, wall thickness of the tube, tube pitch and the tube layout patterns. Now, what is tube pitch and uh, what is tube uh, layout patterns we are going to see in our upcoming slides. So, what is the purpose? So, the tube should be able to withstand the following first operating temperature and pressure on the both side inside as well as the outside because uh, the in the sh uh, shell side fluid is going to flow over the surface of the fluid and one fluid which is going to be flow inside the tube. 
second thermal stress due to the differential thermal expansion between the shell and tube bundles because there are going to be huge temperature difference between the hot fluid and the cold fluid so the tube must withstand with the thermal stresses the third one is corrosive nature of the both shell side and tube side fluid because it is going to be accessible by the both fluid hot fluid as well as cold fluid one fluid is going to be in a contact with the outer surface and one fluid is going to be in contact with the inner surface of the tube so it should be which stand with the corrosive nature of the both fluid there are generally two types of tubes straight tubes and the u tubes as we have seen in our previous figures but it can be further classified into plain tubes of fined tubes duplex or bimetallic tubes plain tubes means uh, without any extended surface or without uh, application of any fin second one is fined tubes uh, sort of uh, surface of the tube with uh, extra surface or enhanced surface is known as the fined tubes duplex or bimetallic tubes which is generally used for a special application uh, where outer surface as well as inner surface of the tubes are going to be provided a separate coating to which tend with the corrosiveness or we can say that the for the fouling then the enhanced surface or uh, we can say that the grooved surface or certain uh, uh, material is going to provide to enhance the heat transfer extended or enhanced surface tubes are used when one fluid has sustainably lower heat transfer coefficient than the other fluid so that you can enhance the heat transfer doubly enhanced tube with enhancement both on inside and outside of the tubes are available that can reduce the size and cost of the heat exchanger we have this uh, we have discussed uh, this two points in our heat uh, enhancement of heat transfer lecture extended surface of the fin tubes types can provide two to four times as much heat transfer area on the outside as the corresponding bare tube and this enhanced area helps to offset a lower outside heat transfer coefficient now what are the tube layout patterns so generally tubes are arranged in a this uh, kind of patterns either it is triangle or a square or in a this way the angles are differ generally 30 degree 45 90 and 60 degree as you can see this is a front view of this is a, uh, this circle shows the shell there are, this is number of tubes which are inside the shell so here in this figure you can see that it is arranged in a 90 degree with each other the center of this tubes four tubes suppose you can see so these are at the 90 degree so this is a one layout so these are the different layout patterns by which you can arrange the tubes in a shell so tube layout arrangements are designed so as to include as many tube as possible our purpose is to fit as many tube as uh, as many tubes as possible within the shell to achieve maximum heat transfer area sometimes layout is selected to uh, which also permits uh, access to the tubes for the cleaning as required by the process conditions four standard types of tube layouts patterns are triangle which is at 30 degree these angles are according to the flow not according to the this ref, uh, this reference line okay rotated triangle square this is rotated triangle this is square and the rotated square this is rotated square this is rotated triangle note that the tube layout angle is defined in relation to the flow direction this angle is according to the flow direction not related to the horizontal or vertical reference line but here uh, the flow is horizontal so these angles are made according to the flow direction not any particular horizontal reference or vertical reference line arrangement so the selection of the tube layout pattern depends on the following parameters which influence the shell side performance and hence the overall performance first compactness second heat transfer rate third one is a pressure drop and fourth one is accessibility to the mechanical cleaning and the last one phase change if any phase change if any one is uh, any on the shell side then how to decide the tube diameter tube size is specified by the outside diameter as well as the wall thickness so from the heat transfer point of view the smaller diameter tubes leads the higher heat transfer coefficient and result in a compact heat exchanger however larger diameter tubes are easier to clean more rugged and they are necessary when allowable tube side pressure drop is small <clears throat> almost all heat exchanger tube fall within the range of uh, 1/4 inch it means 6.35 mm to 2 inch 5.8 mm outside diameter tema tube sizes there are standard sizes 
of the outside diameter are 143 by 1 by 2 up to the 2 inch or in mm it is from 6.35 to the 5280 mm 50.80 mm the standard tube sizes and gauges for various metals are given by tema tables so this size gives the best performance and are most economical in a many applications tubes of diameter 1 inch are normally used when fouling is expected because the smaller ones are not suitable for the mechanical cleaning now the tube wall thickness so the tube wall thickness is generally identified the Birmingham wire gauge the standard tube size and tube wall thickness is inches uh, in inches are presented in a tema tables so the tube wall thickness must be checked against the internal and external pressure separately because uh, the, uh, the thickness is mainly responsible for the withstand of the uh, pressure of the fluid so our maximum pressure differential across the wall now next one is low fin tubes there are here as you can see in this figure grooved or we can say that the extra surface is provided to enhance the heat transfer so in a shallow tube heat exchanger employ low fin tubes to increase the surface area on the shell side this is the shell side outer surface of the tube when the shell side heat transfer coefficient is low as compared to tube side coefficient so inner side is the if uh, the coefficient is higher as compared to outer side then there is a enhanced surface is going to use to increase the heat transfer or increase the value of heat transfer coefficient at the shell side so that when the shell side fluid is highly viscous liquid gases or condensing vapor the low fin tubes are generally helical or annular fins on the individual tubes are used the surface area of such fins is about to 2.5 to 3.5 times that of the bare tubes without fin tubes now duplex or biometallic tubes as we have just discussed that duplex or biometallic tubes are available to meet the specific process problem pertaining to either the shell side or the tube side for example if the tube material is compatible with the shell side fluid but not compatible with the tube side fluid so a biometallic tube allows it to uh, satisfy both the corrosive conditions now the question of number of tubes how to decide the number of tubes that how many tubes we require uh, we need to provide so a number of tubes depends upon the fluid flow rate and the available pressure drop the number of tubes is selected such that the tube side velocity for water and similar liquid ranges from 0.9 to 2.5 meter per second and the shell side velocity is uh, vary from 0.6 to 1.5 meter per second the lower velocity limit is desired to limit fouling because uh, if you lower the velocity there is a high chance of fouling the higher velocity is limit to avoid erosion corrosion on the tube side vibration also now what is tube pitch so it is different as you can see in this figure tube pitch is the difference between the distance between the center of the two uh, center of the two tubes so selection of the tube pitch is comp uh, compromised between the close pitch for increase the shell side heat transfer and the surface compactness and the larger pitch uh, is going to decrease the shell side pressure drop and fouling and ease in cleaning so compromise is made bit, uh, according to this uh, according to this factor in most shell and tube heat exchanger the minimum ratio of tube pitch to tube outside diameter is 1.25 so we can say that the pitch ratio the minimum value is restricted to 1.25 because the ligament a ligament is the portion of material between the two neighboring tube holes may become too weak for a proper rolling of the tube into the tube sheets so these are the important components uh, for the shell and tube heat exchanger in this lecture we have discussed about the diff, uh, tubes about the tube pitch tube diameter tube thickness how to decide number of things about the tema standard for the tube internal diameter and the thickness of the tubes so that's it for today Thank you so much.